Good day and God bless. Welcome to our time of devotion and prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for today and its blessings. The awakening to the grace of awakening and the chance to search for new possibilities, new ways of worshiping you, new ways of serving you, new understandings of your word. But Lord, let us not lose track of what got us here. Even those views that challenge us that we deeply disagree with, Lord, help us to look at all of your word and all that's been said. Let us hear the sermons of those that we agree with and those that leave us scratching our heads. Lord, we pray for those parts of the church that are in division and have a spirit of division among them. We pray for those who use this divisive for their own devices that seek to serve themselves in agendas that do not come from your Holy Spirit, but come from the deceptions that abide all around us in the world. Lord, we pray for the church in its worldliness. We pray for the church in its godliness that we not become so godly and religious and caught up with our ceremonies that people can't connect. That someone coming in the door can't appreciate where this congregation is, O oh Lord. Let us look around ourselves in what service worship ought to offer you by caring for those, by sharing good news to those who are all around us. And Lord, we pray for our children in the learning that we are a part of and, and as they look to us. Lord, let us not just see them as a future, but as a very present in the life of the church. Not as something that will come after us to be like us, but who are better than us and capable of so much more if we would just empower them with what we've been given. Lord, we pray for the church and the world that is struggling because of persecution, because of the, the arena of the world around them, these theaters of war, these places of famine, the, the, the disasters we see in so many places. Lord, we could look on this and fear that the end is coming. But even in the face of the end, you do not call us to fear, but to put our trust in you, O Lord, for you are the beginning and the end, and your love lasts forever. Help us to abide in that love. This in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We turn in God's word to the first letter of Peter, 1 Peter 1, reading at verse 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. And that last word, fervently, we don't use that word fervently enough, but we do do things fervently. We engage in things with great fervor, with great excitement, with great, uh, uh, with great energy. And yet, do we engage in loving one another with the same fervor? Do we engage in showing charity with fervor? Or is it something we're doing out of routine? I think it's a great thing that so many people are re-engaging in the charities in our society that was after being alienated for a couple of years during the pandemic, are, are re, re, refinding themselves in these places. But some people over the course of the pandemic realized that their ability to keep going in those roles uh, was ending anyway and haven't gone back. And there are a lot of, of opportunities in, in volunteerism in our communities and in our, in our regions that, that, that need to be filled by someone new, need someone who's going to take a, a new approach and perhaps change how things are done or with new energy do things the way they've always been done and done well. So part of our loving with fervor is finding what we can be fervent about. What can we engage with a lot of energy? Maybe, and I've, I've, I've been challenged by this by struggling congregations. Struggling to continue to be a congregation might mean closing that congregation so that you can be more energetic about getting children and grandchildren and, and people in the community out to church being able to be in nursing home situations and care homes on a more regular basis, doing ministry there, 
because you're not looking after a facility and trying to keep a, a, a congregation going that isn't ministering to God, but it is ministering to some ideal that's way in the past. I've been challenged and awakened by those who have, in, in the struggle to find new energy in their ministry, have stepped forward into roles they never, they, they always thought in themselves that they could never do. But in, in making that one brave step, are engaging in something that is so fulfilling and so renewing. So take a look at how you can love. Love with a lot of energy. And being obedient to God's truth. The truth that is for you. The truth that speaks to you in who you are. And how you can live, live your life in praise to God. God bless and keep you. Amen.